to imagine that this is actually the last Sunday of 2008. A lot of things have happened in 2008. A lot of things uh, uh, interesting have happened in 2008. But nonetheless, it's weird to think that it's all over. And I, I it seems the older I get, the faster the years go. And I hope that's, is, is it even out at some point? I, no? Uh, hope so but anyway but it goes fast and uh and it's an interesting time where we we begin to reflect on uh, what's taken part in the last year and i love it because you can watch new shows and they go and they do lists of the most influential people of 2008 i didn't see my name on that list but uh maybe something no, i'm joking and then uh and then there's lists of the the major events that have happened throughout the year and uh, then there's also you get on the espn and they start talking about all the the teams that won the championships the sports stars that have come up and of course we all remember uh who was that special Olympian this past year? Michael Phelps, who holds the record for the most golds won in an Olympics. So, I mean, that was a really exciting thing in the sports world. And then we get into, you know, the best movies of the year, and then we get lists of the best albums of the year, music albums, and that's my favorite thing to, to discuss and to debate and to, to say that my list is always correct. But, but we do this. We get to the end of the year and we begin to reflect on, on what has happened in the last year. But we also begin... To look towards the next year. What's going to happen in 2009? So there's this moment in, in uh, this week or so where we begin to reflect on what happened and we begin to find hope in what will happen. You know, maybe there's some fear in there as well of what will happen in the coming year. So it's a fun time. It's, it's an interesting time. And, and there's something that always does happen during this week before Christmas and New Year's Eve. And I'm sure all of us sit down with uh, paper in, in front of us and a pencil in our hand, and we begin to prepare our resolutions for the next year. We begin to, to see what we want to improve on in our lives. We begin to say, you know, I didn't do this that great in this year. Maybe I'll do a little bit better for next year. And I, I have found with lists like this that I have tried to do that slowly it becomes uh, a list that is getting closer and closer to absurdity. Because, you know, I'll start off by saying I'm going to read my Bible more. And I'm going to grow in Christ more. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to eat healthy. And then I start getting into other things like I'm going to climb a mountain. And I'm going to, you know, uh, drive a race car. You know, stuff like that, where all of a sudden we make these lists that are, are crazy sometimes. And, but anyway, uh, but this idea of preparing resolutions is, is a common idea. And actually, today I, I found, a, or not today, but this week as we were preparing, I found a list that was put together by uh, the United States government. I found it on a government website uh, of saying what are the popular... Uh, popular New Year's resolutions that have been come up in this last month. And so this is your, I'm sharing with you uh, your tax dollars at work. So you can appreciate that. There we go. But here's a list. And listen to these lists. And I think a lot of us can relate to some of these and, and that we've all, we may have had one or two of these on our list before. Lose weight. Manage debt. Save money. Get a better job. Get fit. Uh, eat right. Get a better education, drink less alcohol, quit smoking now, reduce stress overall, reduce stress at work, take a trip, and volunteer to help others. That sounds like a reasonable list. That sounds like a good list. I'm sure that we've had, maybe even we've had close to all of those on a list of our resolutions at one point or time, at one point in time. And I think what's interesting though is that over half of these deal with health deal with health issues, and the rest of them deal with financial issues. What sort of drew, drew me in and, and, and draw, got my attention on it, and I was realizing that a lot of these resolutions are resolutions in the way that saying, how am I perceived by my neighbor and my peers? They aren't necessarily resolutions that are saying, you know, I'm going out to, to help other people. I mean, there was one that said volunteer to help other people. But for the most part, they're very selfish in nature in saying that I want to improve myself to make myself look better. 
I'm going to improve my financial situation so that others will know that I have things. I'm going to improve my health and my physique so others will see how dashingly handsome I am. But it's, the focus is how am I perceived by my neighbors and my peers. And so it got me thinking, when I make this list of resolutions, am I going to what the world is calling me to look like or am I going to what God is calling me to look like? A few years ago, Krista and I were having a conversation around this time, and I've always found that some of my best conversations are with Krista. And I've found that in this conversation, we were trying to figure out what some of these resolutions could be. And uh, sort of got to the end of the conversation, and I just sort of realized how I wanted to become just a better person. And and everything, you know, I mean, it wasn't just one specific area. I just felt that I needed to improve. I needed to just be better. I just hadn't reached anything. And, and, And it was sort of one of those moments where I just was like, all right, just help me be a better person. And it was in that moment that I really began to look into the Bible to see how I'm going to prepare the resolutions for the next year, for what will come, because surely it'll come the next year. And so today I want to read to you Colossians uh, 3, 12 through 17. And it's in this passage that I I really found it helped shape uh, my resolutions for 2009. And so as you hear this passage, I want you to think of this idea of resolutions, uh, this idea of what you want to be in 2009. So listen listen to the Word of God. Therefore is God's chosen people Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And all of these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through Him. And so it was in this passage that I began to put together these resolutions that I have for 2009, and I found four things. I found four things in this passage. The first one I found in verses 12 through 14. This idea of having more expressions of love in my life. And we see here in, the, in verse 12 that it talks about these specific virtues. These specific virtues that are, that are, in, that are supposed to be in one's heart and are supposed to be in one's life if they're going to be a follower of Christ. And we see them as compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Those are some pretty good characteristics of an individual. Those are some pretty good attributes to have. Uh, I found here that it was saying that, that these characteristics, these, these virtues, point to the qualities of life which, if present in the community of believers, will eliminate or at least reduce frictions. Could you imagine being a... If you lived the life that was uh, having all of these virtues, how you would react in, in, a, in a situation at work. Instead of putting your foot in your mouth, you would have compassion. And you would see how that would reduce some friction at work. Instead of uh, just not having enough patience with a coworker giving them time, letting them space something out. Could you see how that could help a situation out? Uh, One of the questions, I mean, one of the things that someone has here is reduce stress altogether and reduce stress at work. If we could have these virtues, if we could have these characteristics in our lives, how would we handle situations in different ways? Would they help us in having a life that is less just bumping heads with people and more being open and being compassionate with other people 